Oh, we're here, we're here, we're here, we're here. This is Rain? This is a Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood song. Oh, not the neck bite. They need Ed. Oh, no. It's Loth. Oh. Oh, he came in pre-shirt off. The stone. The stone. Look at him. Welcome back to another Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood video. Today we have episode 52. So I'm thinking it's about time for a lot of these fights to truly start breaking out. We got left off with that fantastic ending last episode of Alphonse standing up to Kimberly and Pride. Philosopher's Stone in hand. I can't wait to see what happens with that. I hope we get a really good continuation of that straight on in this episode. It's all I've been thinking about. But not only that, we have Ed, Scar and the Chimeras going up against the zombie dummies. Alex Armstrong about to fight Sloth and May and Envy down in the tunnels as well. I just can't wait to see what happens with all of these fights. We did spend a lot of time bouncing around all of these fights last episode, setting them up. I have a feeling that's what the show is going to continue to do, bounce around between each of these, I guess, four fights. And we have Roy and the squad as well as like a little fifth thing going on. But I just can't wait to see Alphonse get in the mix with this Philosopher's Stone. It's just like Alphonse has had a lot of really big moments, right? And to me, a lot of them have been verbal and not necessarily physical, right? This could be like Alphonse's big fighting moment. I, I, I cannot wait to see what happens, but I'm not gonna waste any more time here. I'm gonna get into the episode now. Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, episode 52. Combined strength, All right, let's get it. Oh, it's time. Look at him. It's yours, Kimberly. Oh my God, he's doing it. We're straight into it, I'm so here for it. Oh, he's moving! Oh, he, oh, we're doing things now. Pride and Kimberly at the same time. What, what do we got, Alphonse? Oh! He just regenerates his arm just like that. Oh, and he transmutes his leg, his foot, into a sword. Oh, this is dope. Dang! He bent the sword. Oh, <laughs> I'm blown away right now. The same thing. Oh, you know, oh. Damn it. Oh. I'm so happy. And Pride's just sealed off again by Alphonse this time and not Hohenheim. That sequence was nuts. What I'd like to know is why you don't use that power to give your original body back. Now we know. You wouldn't have any trouble fleeing from us. And once you had gotten away. Oh, this music track coming in. To restore your bodies. And then your journey would end, wouldn't it? Well. If I did that, I couldn't say That's the thing. Yeah, there's a big picture. Equivalent exchange. It isn't right. I have to choose between returning to our original bodies and saving everyone. Uh-huh. But why can't we have our real bodies back and save everyone? It isn't fair. You save everyone first, and then there'll be a way. But it's the law of equivalent exchange. Uh-huh. Well, I say searching for possibilities that aren't bound by rules or laws. That's how humanity advances. Okay. More verbal Alphonse here. Exception to the rule. You can effectively rewrite the laws of nature as we understand them. The Kimberly is so interested in this. Because there is another possibility, you know. You don't get your bodies back. Yeah. And you don't save everyone. He's not wrong. It could certainly happen. It could. Oh, it's time. Philosopher's Stone fight. Let's go. Oh, transition. Okay. I'm not finished yet. Okay. Dang. The sloth ain't feeling any of it. Oh, I'm kidding. Oh, they're both fighting. Ooh, the Armstrong siblings against sloth. Good. He has weak spots. But then, all out. Everything's a pain for sloth. Right, He's not going all out. Demon. 
Uh oh. Uh oh. wasn't ready oh my god does he have any control over what he's doing that's what I'm saying stop it oh I did not see this coming okay so that's like the sloth part of him I guess so she's oh Alex caught it for sure. That sick transition again. Kimberly's let out pride. I love that sound. There's nothing more beautiful than the sound of two strong souls colliding against each other in battle. Two strong souls. Decoy? No, he was ready for it. Alchemy! What? Oh, yeah, okay. Even with the stone, there's no way you'll win this all by yourself. I'm not alone. Huh? He's got all the people in the stone. Wait. Let the stone go. <gasps> Hi, kill? There's no way. This dust cloud was to let him know the direction of the wind. Of the wind? It must be. He said something downwind where my sense of smell won't work. Oh. Who? Who? It's Heigl! Oh my god! How can he move with those He's got the stone! Look! Look! Oh, it's- Oh! Marco. Marco's got it! Oh, and it's Marco against Kimberly. Hang on, hang on. We might be doing stuff here. Okay. Oh, they've changed trucks. Okay. We're splitting up here. You two take them. It's the intro. Okay, okay. Look at him. Oh, uh oh. <laughs> Look at Ed. I'm I'm feeling a lot of things right now. Let's go, Scar. Okay. What are you thinking, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, this is so good! Here we go! <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Damn, it's so hard for him, look! Because they're still souls, man. Oh, we're... Combined effort. He did! He did catch him! Let's go! I've got tears in my eyes. I'm like... <laughs> Look at the siblings. Dislocated shoulder. Same. Same. I did that one time. That's all. Ain't nothing for the brig soldiers. Oh shit. We're not done yet. He punched the music right out of the, sh right out of the show. Oh! I'm gonna kill you quickly, and then sleep. Dude, the transitions this episode are making me very happy. Nice, nice. Hmm, it's Kimberly. He's reluctant to endanger Kimberly. Interesting. But that's not like him at all. No, but why? So Marco, I think, healed Heinkel. Transition! No, who is this? Is it Yoki? There's no way. There's no way. I am sick. Yoki just took out Pride. And... 
That's fuzzy lip. Okay, Yoki, get involved then. Hey, he's not wrong. <laughs> Let's go. What? The living Kimberly. Okay. You're gonna run out of range. Oh shit! They took the roof off. Okay, we got away. We got away. All right, Yoki. I'll give you. I'll give you this one. Damn, is Kimberly? He is not in a good way. Damn! <laughs> okay. Oh shit. Are we helping or what? I'm not ready for Kimberly to leave the show just yet. Ooh. Don't! Don't! He does not eat Kimberly! He doesn't eat Kimberly. Dude, look at Pride. He doesn't eat Kimberly. Because you will continue to live inside me. No, man. Well, I'm sick. Not Kimberly. Wait, wait, what, 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 what? Don't, don't. Not Armstrong as well. Alex. No, he's okay. Oh! Oh! I knew he was going to come oh my god! That's the craziest thing I have ever seen in the show. Olivia, are you able to stand? That is Alex doing that. You guys need to chill, come on. This man just shoved a freaking spear through Stoff's face and he's worried about this. Uh oh, there's no way. Uh oh, what's going on now? What's going on out there? All the zombies. It's the zombies, they're about to come in. Oh no! Here they all come. Oh, it's uh, I hate it so much. Are they are they feeling damage a little bit? Okay, this might be the combined effort. Soldiers might have to team up with the Armstrongs. Tell them. Oh my God. It is literally a zombie movie. My brother and I can take care of these monsters. Okay, yep. Uh oh, sloth. Oh, that boy's coming back. He's coming. Oh, he's coming. Well, what's it gonna be? Do you plan on shooting us and then fall prey to the monsters after? Talk to him. Talk to him! Okay. Oh my god, look at Envy's arms. Oh, I'm so stressed about this. Uh oh. Okay. Don't, don't. That, can, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> but Envy can. Oh, Envy's just gonna keep absorbing them, man. Oh, it's not good. This is not good. Okay. So, Ma yes, good, good. All right, May's thinking.
Yeah. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Good. How do we actually get out of this situation, though? If they just keep coming. Look at this, so many. Oh, no. Who? Who? It's Roy. It's Roy. The explosion? I'm gonna lose my mind. Oh, it's over now. This is the same room that Roy killed Lust in. Good, 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 good. I am so happy. That might, that just might have been the best episode so far. That just parts of that made me so happy. So it's only the second episode since the final OP has been introduced and we've already had an epic scene with it playing. So I'm so glad I listened to it, even though I already knew the song. I'm so glad that I listened to it and, and became familiar with the fact that Rain was indeed the fifth OP. I know there's going to be more scenes like that and I can't wait. But just like I thought, we did bounce around between all of the fights a lot this episode, but they did spend a lot of time with Alphonse, which I was really happy about. And the transitions throughout this episode, the show has just picked up so much like we are here like the soundtrack is different everything's hitting the animation looks fantastic i'm just so happy right now so i'm thinking for episodes like this uh, the discussions might not be as long because we're just mostly focused on the action right and all the cool things that are happening but of course i will highlight as much as i can okay so alphonse with a philosopher's stone is a demon and combining that with his intellect and his ability to outsmart Pride and Kimberly, he mops the floor with them. Granted, this is before Kimberly starts using his Philosopher's Stone, but Alphonse pretty much owns Pride and Kimberly. It's really showing off how skilled Alphonse really is. If we go back to earlier in the show, remember Ed mentions that he never beat Alphonse, right? In a hand-to-hand -hand battle, right? So a lot of that skill comes back into play here. And just how much of a quick thinker Alphonse is, like he has his leg torn off, he instantly regenerates it, and then Pride throws the leg that he tore off at him and he catches it and transmutes it into a sword. And as he like hits Pride shadows, he like transmutes the sword to bend it. Just some really fantastic scenes here and some fantastic creativity. But Alphonse does really get a massive moment here. He does manage to seal up Pride in the same way Hohenheim did. And he does it all by himself, granted with the help of the Philosopher's Stone, but he seals up Pride and Kimberly perhaps gives his final speech in the show. Is he gone? We'll get to that later. But Kimberly becomes very intrigued, right? With Alphonse's character. It is a very interesting conversation where Kimberly's talking about, you know, the Elric's values and their ideals and whatnot. Pretty much like you won't use the stone to get your bodies back, like that's part of your ideals. But Alphonse is essentially using the stone to try and save everyone, not to get their bodies back. Like Kimberly's talking about their specific journey, right? Get your bodies back, right? Then you're done, that's your journey. But we're not thinking about the bigger picture here, right? Obviously Ed and Al right now are more concerned with saving a mistress, right? That is taking priority. And Alphonse says, well, why should we have to choose? between saving everyone and getting our bodies back. Why can't we have both? And they mentioned, you know, equivalent exchange and whatnot, like there is a, a law here. And to that, Alphonse says, humanity advances by searching for possibilities that aren't bound by rules and laws. To which Kimberly says, okay, so if you find an exception to the rule, then you can rewrite the laws of nature, essentially. And to me, that's like finding something else other than a philosopher's stone. You know, like we were talking about earlier, combining alchemy with alkahestry, or maybe there's some other way, but that's pretty much the takeaway here. You know, just reinforcing, especially Alphonse's ideals and values in this instance. You know, I won't use the Philosopher's Stone to get my bodies back, but I will use it to try and save everyone. But why can't I have both? Kind of going back to earlier in the show with how much research they would do and like the kind of scientist aspects of the two of them, like trying to perform human transmutation and whatnot. You know, I'm trying to find an exception to the law. I'm trying to advance, right? And then Kimberly on the flip side to which he is absolutely right. And I was saying this throughout this scene. He's like, there is the other possibility where you don't get your bodies back and you don't save everyone. He's absolutely right. That is a very real possibility. 
enter Kimberly's Philosopher's Stone, right? And then things start to turn a little bit worse, right? Because Kimberly is still a very skilled alchemist and he has a lot of experience using the Philosopher's Stone. So he doesn't really have a problem blowing Alphonse away and setting Pride free. And now that Kimberly is using his Philosopher's Stone, using all of his power, it becomes a lot more difficult for Alphonse to hold them down. Awesome transition number one to the Armstrong siblings against Sloth. Now, initially, I kind of thought it was just going to be Alex against Sloth, you know, that big burly matchup, and that's the kind of way they made it out to sync last episode. But no, they both fight together, which is awesome, you know, and they pretty much were able to hold Sloth down, right? And then he pretty much alludes to the fact that, that he's not going all out. You know, he says, going all out is the biggest pain of all. And I'm like, oh no, what, what can he do? Can he transform as well? What has he got? And out of nowhere, Sloth is the fastest homunculus. That caught me so off guard, just as off guard as anything else has in the show. It was insane, but being Sloth, he doesn't have a lot of control over his speed, all right? So that's a positive, but at the same time, it's pretty nuts having just this blur of speed and the big giant that he is flying around and knocking everything around. Awesome transition number two, back to Alphonse, Kimberly, and Pride. Like I was saying, now it's not looking as good for Alphonse, right? Pride manages to capture him. Alphonse makes another reference to, you know, I still think you're underestimating us humans. And then Alphonse doesn't have the stone anymore. And I'm like, did he give it to Heinkel? Has Heinkel used it somehow? Well, I don't know if he can, like he's like, do you have to be an alchemist to be able to use the stone in that way? I don't know. But in comes Heinkel in lion form and he's got Kimberly in the neck. And I'm thinking, okay, that could be a pretty devastating blow, right? But there's Marco who has appeared, you know, and he's got the stone and we know what Marco can do. So Marco is probably fixed up Heinkel, at least to the point where he can come in and make a difference, which he has. He gets Kimberly completely by surprise. Now we've got Roy, Ross and Hawkeye. They've transmuted the truck, right? Because they know the military are looking for the ice cream truck. They've changed it to a meat truck. And essentially the plan is to split up, head for you know where, and I'm sure we'll find out where there is later. But we for sure know where Roy ends up. Rain, the opening music starts to come in and I'm starting to feel things. The whole time that song was playing, I had chills, you know, I got tears in my eyes. I'm not kidding. It was just epic, right? And you have to look at this whole situation. So it's playing over this scene of Ed, Scar, and three chimeras who used to be Kimberly's men all fighting together against these zombie dummies. And, and you just look like 30, 40, 50 episodes ago, you would just never think we'd be in this situation. Ed is teaming up with Scar. We have three of these chimeras that used to be on the other side and we're all fighting together. This is part of the combined strength, you know, the title of the episode. And it just, it hits so hard. And you can see throughout this scene that Ed seems like hesitant and there's like pain on his face. Like he knows that these are still souls, right? He still sees them as human, right? Because they're bound with Philosopher's Stones. It's the same thing. Like he's doing what he has to do but he clearly wishes there was another way, or at least that's what it feels like to me. Epic transition number three, as Ed swipes across at one of the zombies, we go back to Sloth and the Armstrongs, right? We left off with, with Sloth almost landing a massive blow. It seemed like on Olivier, and I'm thinking, okay, Alex has probably come in, right, and caught the blow, right? And what do we have? But Alex coming in and blocking Sloth's blow. Epic. The opening music is still playing over this epic Armstrong scene. The show knows what it's doing, right? This is 50 episodes accumulating all to this sort of stuff right now. This is the big time. These are the moments that we remember from this show. Another cool transition, we're back to the Alphonse situation, right? Heinkel has Kimberly and Pride has Alphonse. And Alphonse does point out that Pride seems hesitant to endanger Kimberly, which becomes very interesting uh, considering we know what happens at the end of the episode. And it did strike me as odd in the moment as well. And then Pride says something along the lines of like, humans are tenacious, but you have no hope of winning. And I'm wondering if he's looking at Kimberly while he's saying this, like he's looking at, you know, Kimberly had a Philosopher's Stone, how strong he was, but he still was felled by Heinkel in this instance and Alphonse, I guess. Maybe he's looking at Kimberly as a human, like, you know, you were on our side pretty much and you were so strong, but you still failed in this situation. So that's kind of my interpretation of that's a very interesting uh, little circumstance. Pride goes after Marco and who in the world should show up to save the situation but freaking Yoki. Now I've trash talked Yoki so much 
but you have to give him this. Even last episode, it was pretty clear he did not want to get involved in this. You know, he was just about begging Marco, like, we don't have to get involved. You know, uh, you know, he was scared. He seemed very scared. Don't get me wrong. He still seemed piss scared right here. But nevertheless, he did it. He comes flying in in Kimberly's car and he just completely barrels over Pride, the strongest homunculus. And you know what's really interesting as I watch the scene again? Uh, I wonder if it's a little bit of a callback of a Pride getting smacked by the car here, uh, because when he was talking about Mrs. Bradley a few episodes ago, he mentioned that she did save him from being hit by a car, I believe, or, or maybe at least she jumped in front of it or something like that, you know, but it was something to do with being hit by a car. And then he gets absolutely demolished by a car here. So that's very interesting. All four of them managed to get away. And then we have another situation I was just not expecting. And I said this, I was like, I'm not ready for Kimberly to be gone yet. I feel like he still has a whole nother situation to have. I want to see him fight Scar more. But Pride is talking more about humans and then he's looking at Kimberly barely hanging on. Really cool shot, by the way, of Kimberly dressed all in white, you know, soaked in blood through here. You know, here's the Crimson Alchemist. So all that red, you know, and Pride talks about, you know, what Kimberly always said. You know, he wanted to see you know, what side the world would choose, you know, the humans or the homunculi. And here is Kimberly on death's door, you know, felled by Heinkel as a lion, to which Pride points out is the king of the beasts, says he punctured him right through his windpipe, so he's cooked. Pride licks his lips, just like he did with gluttony, so you already knew what was gonna happen. And it's just another situation come out of nowhere, all right? Just like Hughes, Lust, even when they almost killed Envy, when Marco almost did, excuse me, and now this. Pride has seemingly consumed Kimberly. I wanted Kimberly to keep going. I felt like he was gonna do more, but if this is it, this could just make Pride so much stronger. Like, I don't even know. I don't even know what to say about this. Like, I'm just so caught off guard by it. And Pride's like, you will continue to live on inside me. And then you hear the sound effect of Pride consuming Kimberly. Now, you do have to look at it, you know, from an anime perspective. We didn't see it happen. We just heard it. But I'm pretty sure that's what happened, right? I think Kimberly has been consumed by Pride. I'm shook. Another really cool transition. We're back to the Armstrongs and Sloth. Now this caught me just about as off guard as anything else. Initially, I thought Armstrong was in trouble. We've just gone from Kimberly being eaten by pride and then it, it almost looked like Armstrong was in trouble, Alex. And then, oh my God, like he has transmuted this massive stone pillar that's just pierced right through Sloth's arm and his mouth, you know, as he's gone in for the blow. And just the way that Sloth is looking here just catches me so off guard. It's insane. And this is Alex Armstrong. He is the guy here. He's actually doing these crazy things. He's such a nice guy, like throughout the show and everything, very emotional. But then when characters like that do stuff like this, I get hyped. And a little bit of comic relief, as there always is within these episodes, right? As the Armstrong siblings are being held, once again, at gunpoint by soldiers that refuse to shoot on sight. Alex is saying, you can't die, that means I'll inherit the mansion. There's all this paperwork, and Olivia's like, no you won't, because I said Roy will get it. Just a nice little callback to things from previous episodes, just thrown in through amongst all the chaos that's going on right now. And the soldiers are looking at them like, what is this conversation they're having being held at gunpoint right now? And then we get, you know, it's just such classic, like, zombie film situations like we can hear the gunfire going off in the other rooms and then the way it pans to the door i'm just like it's gonna be the zombies it has to be like this is just I, i've seen these movies before i know how this goes and then we find ourselves in another very interesting situation right the soldiers can't deal with the zombies you know they can shoot them right but they just get back up the armstrong siblings can deal with the zombies if the soldiers do what they're supposed to and kill the armstrong siblings here they're gonna get killed by the zombies olivia is just like she grabs the gun gun and puts it to her head like if you're gonna shoot just shoot but if you do you are going to die as well sloth is regenerating as well like they've just seen that alex bested sloth in that instance right these soldiers right they need to disobey their orders right let the armstrong siblings live right so they can all get out of this situation right can't wait to see more of that in the next episode we finally get some more of may and envy right they are fighting may is just so nimble lots of dexterity avoiding all of envy's blows so easily more zombies turn up envy absorbs a couple of them constantly getting stronger and may kind of comes up with a really nice plan here she's like look i can't avoid all these zombies for that long but i can avoid one of you so if i 
pretty much trick you into absorbing all of these zombies, right? Then I can just continue to dance around you. And that's what she does. And as she runs away, she's talking about the zombies, right? They all have philosopher's stones. That's their immortality. But she has to find another way for Shing, for her clan, right? Keeping this theme very strong for Mei. Last scene of the episode, and what a good one it was. Back down with Scar, Ed, and the Chimeras. They're starting to struggle, being overwhelmed by the zombies. They just don't see an end. And I'm thinking, yeah, same thing. How are they going to get out of this situation? Someone's going to rock up. And in comes Roy and Hawkeye. And it's done. It's done. Roy's just going to... And it's going to be over. And then the team up gets even crazier with Roy and Hawkeye in the mix as well. And like I said during the episode, this is the same room that Roy killed Lust in. Hawkeye was there as well. Like it's just oh, the, the callbacks. I love it. And anytime there is a shot of Roy just about to do his flame alchemy, it's just sick. Fantastic shot to end the episode on. And that's it. Lots of epic moments. The fighting has not disappointed, right? And we're still right in the thick of it. That episode hit me in so many ways, right? I'm glad that was the first episode I watched in this session. There's gonna be at least two or three more. Again, I'm gonna try my best not to miss any important details. It's a lot harder to miss things when it's most of it's just fighting, but I think I'm gonna leave this one there. Again, so many fantastic moments that I'm so happy about. Nothing has disappointed just yet. I'm gonna keep the momentum rolling throughout this last arc and go on to the next episode. So thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. It would help me out a lot. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, please feel free to leave your comments and feedback down below. You know I always appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next episode of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood.